trip to St. Tiernix Park in Clonus for what is a big day, of course, in Derry and Meath Camogie as they fight it out for the cup on my right hand side here, the Jack McCraw Cup. The Meath team, of course, won it back in 2017, back to 2012 for Derry. Some of them still involved, of course, from uh, those teams back those days, but a lot of change among both setups as they look forward to bringing back the title. And it will, of course, be decided today. It all has to be done. We will have a winner takes all here by the end of it. You never know what might happen. Of course, we saw in Crow Park how tight it got. Will we have extra time? We'll never, we'll, we won't judge anything by... Uh, we'll see how the action turns out here as we go throughout the uh, afternoon. My name is Killian Whelan and we will be bringing you the best of the action here, as we said, from this Glen Dimplex All-Ireland Camogie Intermediate Final and it's all on the way. Shortly to hear from both managers. And you're welcome back to Clonus. The man you see on screen is Brendan Skeen, the Mead manager. Uh, Brendan... Here we are, back in uh, action. We're in Clonus this time. Um, how's the week gone after the, the trolls and the tribulations, everything that went on in Crow Park last weekend? Um, yeah, I mean, we, we were a little bit flat coming off the pitch at the end last year, uh, last week. And I think probably Derry were the same as well. I think we felt like we could have won it at the end. They felt like they threw it away in the second half. So it was about getting the girls back in the right frame of mind. And on Tuesday night, we had a really good session. You know, we talked about what went wrong in the first half, last in particular last week. But also, second half performance was about turnovers rather than us winning primary possession up front. So we, we need to address that. We worked on a few things. And, um, yeah, we had a really good session, a hard session on Tuesday night, which was good. They recovered on Monday. And on Thursday night there, we just a nice session, talked about how we get ready for today the heads are in good I think they're a lot more relaxed mm. than they were going into Crow Park and I, I guess that's the same for everybody you know it's a, it's a big setup there it's emotionally draining going into it to start off and then when when you have the weather the elements against you at the very start of the game as well it just mm. upset so little things like that unsettle the girls hopefully we'll, we'll, uh, we'll get to the pitch of the game a little bit earlier this year this week um, that's yeah, the plan anyway. and that was going to be my question to you. I'm sure that's the word you're getting through to girl. We can't afford to start like we did the last time. Not at all. Absolutely not. You know that performance in the first half last week. Even though we could have snuck that win at the end there, mm. it wouldn't have been fitting to to win the game with that performance. To be honest with you, you know, yeah, we'll, we'll take any win we can. Yeah. But, but really, you know, we're in front of the nation last weekend. They know themselves. They didn't put themselves out there the best possible light. Um, a lot to improve on in that first half, but very proud of their second half performance to get themselves back into the game, you know, and the never say die attitude showed. And it's, it's been there all year long with them, so yeah. Brendan, last question. I believe you made one change uh, to the setup uh, for your starting team. You know, obviously, you know, uh, going on form or is it a tactical kind of issue? Yeah, it's a little bit of both. Um, certainly, it's it's from a tactical point of view. We needed somebody. We need somebody to address the uh, the threat of that, that. I suppose the platform that Eva Cassidy is building from their centre back position. So we'll see. We put a player in there just to see if we can um, as we tailor that from the start and maybe just calm that, that movement down from their back and keep them busy up the other end of the pitch like for a while but we'll see how it fares out we wish you the best of luck thanks very much thank you now the man you see on screen is Derry manager PJ O'Mullen uh, PJ here we are back in Clonus I suppose you're, you're glad maybe in a way to be back here because when you're thinking of the late chance that Mead had probably to win that game you're just glad as I said you have a second chance at it I suppose yeah well look it's better to leave Crook Park with some kind of result there's no result and um Look, we got we got a result. Uh, I know a lot of people are talking about Nifa Minogue's missing near the finish and that there, but look, we had a chance just two or three minutes before that in front of the post. You know, nine times out of ten they would go over. So, look, both teams are here. I say both teams are here, just with a bit of relief and looking to learn from the last day. Do you think there was a little bit of nerve or anything like that of going to Crow Park? You know, there, there wasn't too many would have played in Crow Park before. No, look, we had only one player played in Crook Park previously last Sunday. Um, I think me played their their national league final in Crook Park. So mm. look, advantage or no advantage, you know, I, I don't know many people have played in Clonus here today, but look, it's in splendid shape. It's mm. as good a shape as Crook Park was last week. So look, pitch and all that, we can't have any excuses today. You know, what I mean, it's uh, you know, it's an all Ireland stake, and we have to turn up and perform for sixty minutes. PJ, I believe you had to change holiday plans and everything like that. <laughs> How did that go down at home? Yeah, uh, just like to say to my parents and my kids out in Spain, we'll see you tomorrow morning. You know what I mean? And I think the kids have been with us in the whole journey, so you know they're disappointed they can't be here but look there's other people there's about a couple of players were due to go on holiday as well like uh, you just make the arrangements you know we, we flew out on Tuesday we trained on Monday we got together I flew back yesterday my wife's part of the backroom team so we just flew back yesterday afternoon we're flying back out tomorrow morning again you know what I mean like it's 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 one of them things like, you know, like it's you know it's um, the rest of the management team are fit to look after things on Wednesday evening so 
no, it's, it's well, all good. Uh, at the end of the day, though, if you're bringing Jack McGrath a cup out of uh, Clonus, it'll be all worth it, won't it? Well, it will be. The sun will be shining if that happens. <laughs> <laughs> Wish you the best of luck. Thanks very much. Thanks, Peter. Andrew, welcome back here to St. Tyrannix Park in Clonus and uh, behind us, teams about uh, just getting ready to get underway, going through their last warm-up and you can see on camera I've been uh, joined by Jane Dolan and Kleena Nivinon and uh, Jane, looking at it from a Mead point of view, um, you love replays, don't you? <laughs> we've, we've formed them, yeah, to be fair, uh, 2017 was a replay against Cork as well, but um, I think to be fair it's great that the girls get another shout out, um, I don't think they did themselves justice last week, um, even though they did fight back and they did everything right in the second half, but I think they'd be able to prove a point today. Looking at it as well from that me point of view, you know, um, the start will be hugely important. You feel you can't allow Derry that, that second opportunity again of, you know, getting an eight-point lead. Yeah, the thing is with Derry, they're such a strong and they're really good team of passing and, and, and making play. If you give them the space, they're just going to do it and they're going to tear you apart, which they did in the first half last week. Um, but in fairness to the girls, they, they pulled it together in the second half and they tightened it up. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's all about starting, it's about keeping it going for the whole game. Stay with us for a minute, Jane. Uh, Kleena, thanks for joining us. Uh, from a Derry point of view, you know, a game that they were in control of and uh, badly let slip, you would have to say. Yes, uh, I think that we think that they have a lot to prove. Um, they, they really let a lead sort of go there last week, which, you know, no one, I think, was expecting such a lead in the first half and then just completely flip over in the second half. So I think they have a lot to prove. They'll be coming here hungry. The forwards, that get they only got one score in the second half. So they'll be coming to prove a point and everyone will be thinking, oh, they let it go. But they haven't lost yet and they'll be they'll be thinking about that. They'll definitely be looking for the one today. It's been 10 years, more than 10 years since we brought home any silverware today. So uh, we're definitely looking for it today and the girls uh, there's been a lot of momentum behind them all week there's a lot of supporters calling and a lot of support you know in the background for them so I think they're going to give it you know all guns blazing and hopefully we'll, <laughs> we'll bring it home Yeah I, I'm thinking of that forward unit you know I, I'm just thinking that when you look at some of the scoring tallies that they put up it was very surprising then that they weren't able to get much weight of ball which probably says a lot about the Mead defence in some ways Yes it does but um, I think Mead came out all guns blazing too and they probably weren't expecting it I don't know if they came out maybe a wee bit complacent out of the change rooms at half time um, last week but um, I think even in the first half I thought although Derry had the lead I thought the ball was coming out of the forward line quite a lot and a lot of the balls you know it was really the back line the likes of Aoife Nikasaja and Laura McKenna they were feeding the balls in a lot into the Derry forwards so that's really what got us um, into, the, into the front but um, you know both teams have brilliant forwards like Aoife Minogue had a few chances there last week she's some player um, and they'll need to cut down on her she, she did very well last week and you know she needs to be tightly marked so we'll see but uh, Derry definitely have them brilliant forwards and the likes of one McAllister if she can the breeze isn't too strong today so you know long range uh, shit and stuff like that but um, they are lucky they have you know good balls fed in to the forward so it gives them more chances even, even if they miss a few they still will get scores Jane of course a lot made about Aoife Minogue but it's probably going to be one or two other players that probably have to step up from a me point of view to, to back her up because I would imagine after her performance the last day Derry are going to be keeping a tighter eye on Aoife yeah in fairness and I was chatting to Aoife after the game last week and she was genuinely disappointed with her performance um, she, I thought she did unbelievable on the pitch the amount of work that she did but it actually wasn't her best day in, in the green jersey and she knows it herself um, but definitely I think in terms of similar uh, point to, to Derry I don't think that Mead 4 has really got, got into the game last week and it'll definitely be if, if one or two step up and, and um, they can pop up uh, pop over a few scores it'll make a massive difference it'll also take the pressure off FIFA as well to be uh, to be the one that's scoring um, but no uh, de- in terms of the backs as well you've got the experience there Claire Coffey had an unbelievable game last week as well so it's just keeping that momentum going Right, well, we'll see how the game plays out then. Uh, thanks to Jane and Kleena for the minute. Kleena will be joining me on co commentary, so do stick with us, folks. It is, of course, the Intermediate Camogie Championship final replay, and it's here in Clonus for the Jack McGrath Cup. Who'll come out on top? Will it be Mead? Will it be Derry? The next hour and a half will tell us an awful lot. Andrew, welcome back here to Clonus. Let's give you the teams then as we prepare for this clash between Derry and Mead. Uh, beginning with Derry, Dave, uh, just the one change in the, uh, uh, per the programme, but it's the same change as last week's final. So Neve Cribben will be in goal and uh, we'll bring you those teams then after our rendezvous here that's going to be called here. So Derry and Mead, uh, Derry with the change, it is Rachel McAllister in for Amy Lennon. But Mead having one change from the last day and that's his Grace Coleman replaced by Avine Lally. Oh. Uh-huh. 
long wash no sail like on the square for you know I'll not be there So to give you the teams then, Neve Gribben will be in goal for Derry, Neve Quinn, Leah Lennon and Sinead McGill, the full back line. Halfbacks of Rachel Downey, Aoife Nicassida and Lauren McKenna. At centre field, it's Dervlo Kane and Anya McGill, Mairead McNichol, Anya McAllister and Emer McGuigan, the half forwards. And Aoife Shaw, Rachel McAllister and Mary Hegarty will be the full forward line. For me then, it is Tara Murphy in goal, Rachel O'Neill, Claire Coffey and Sophia Payne. The halfbacks made up with Tracy King, Maeve Clinch and Leah Devine. Coming in then for number 8, Grace Coleman, is number 17, Avine Lally, and she'll be alongside Aoife Minogue. Amy Gaffney, Abby Donnelly and Olivia O'Halloran will be the half-forward line and the full-forward line made up of Kira Foley, Emma O'Connell and Ellen Burke, the captain. So, Liz Dempsey in place and ready to go. Liz, of course, was uh, telling me that uh, she has the... I was wondering, had she uh, refereed intermediate final before? She has back in... 2017, the drawn game. She did. So she has done junior, intermediate, and senior. So her second intermediate final for the Kilkenny official. And she's been held up today by Mike Ryan for Tipperary, Max Malloy from Wicklow, and Louise Riley from Cavan. So we get ready to throw the ball in here. Where will Jack McCraw be resting tonight? Will it be in Derry or Mead? Well, it's me to get the first touch, but it looks like Derry's number nine, Anya McGill, has won that ball back. And straight away, she's going to send it towards the town end here, but it's uh, cleared up by Claire Coffey, looking to spray this ball now back down the field. It goes towards the scoreboard end here. Good touch there by Amy Gaffney. Then she's working it here towards Olivia O'Halloran. But the Derry defence are there with Rachel Downey. Back it goes to Nick Cassida and down along the line. That's uh, taking him well and going to get a bit of a move on here now with Mairead McNichol. Mairead who's scored in the majority of games that Derry have played this year. But Derry have lost that ball and it's going to be turned over by me. Mary Hegarty getting this ball moving out. Still hasn't got beyond the 45 on either end. The Derry crowd now trying to get driving behind him here as Derby Kane races forward in this ball. Looking around now to spray this ball towards the post. It looks like it's going to drop short into the grateful hand of Tara Murphy. Loads of time to send it out to her right-hand side. Rachel O'Neill, is she going to win the race to get that ball over there? Derry have number there, but also Mead plenty. And it's uh, well turned and sent on its way by the Royals now, attacking the end here. It looks like it's going to be a free in. And it's a good bit of play there by Emma O'Connell. She's won her own free, taking it quickly, driving it in, out to the left and wide. But uh, I think Liz is calling it back. She was awarded an advantage. So a chance here for Aoife Minogue to get the opening score of the game for Mead. And a chance to draw a breath clean and get you in on commentary. Uh, hectic, hectic start. Yeah, it seems exactly like what was happening last week. The balls were coming in, but they just weren't keeping them uh, in the forward lane. And we've seen the same two players, Aoife and Lauren, driving the ball forward. But... Um, we just need to see the forward line and Derry retaining the ball. So Aoife Minogue with this opportunity then from uh, about 40 metres out of their boats, but five to the right of the right hand upright, sends this to strike, has a lot of power behind it and it's gone up and over the bar. First blood to the Royals then, and they lead by a point to no score here with uh, just about a minute gone. Here in the middle. So the breeze hard to know if it's having much of an impact. It's a bit like a bowl here, as we know, in Tiernix Park in Clonus and can swirl all around the place, a bit like Crow Park. But uh, that puck out finding the sideline, and it's going to be a sideline cut for me to be taken by Rachel O'Neill from Kilmessen Club. Doesn't get a great connection on it, and it's Derry that have intercepted it with uh, Anya McAllister. The joint captain, of course, with Ethan Acasada playing that ball lovely into the middle. Just missed there by Rachel McAllister, but she gets a touch on it. Opportunity now for Derry to level it up here with her number 10, Ray McNichol, up and over the bar. Good play there, Fina, by Derry, you know, in, in manufacturing the score out of that. Aye, when they have very speedy players there at the side. Maria and Anya are well able to take the ball at the line and, and give it off at the right time. Very experienced players. So, ball out. And now underneath the grass there, Rachel Downey again, the Balahi player coming out strong on that. Doesn't get a great connection to get the ball off, but does enough to get it to Anya McGill. Spraying ball across now. Sophia Payne might be giving away a few inches to her direct marker, but she was able to win that ball and uh, give it to Tracy King and 
down along the line it goes but, uh, Derry look like they've uh, regained position over there but a uh, little bit overzealous in getting that ball clear over that far sideline it's uh, tight enough Mike Green watching it but it's me that have turned it over ball is played inside now Amy Gaffney with this opportunity bearing down a goal Amy is still going slaloms to her left hand side good block that's a miss of a swing at it and eventually there is Rachel Downey and uh, three out it's going to be that was very similar to what happened last week but Rachel Downey was also in the ground with <laughs> the breeze going to the another way this time got to be careful though with Amy Gaffney uh, you know she's a soaring star player from 2017 knows all about the big days as well um, you know when she's doing runs like that she's got to be stopped that's it but um, Derry have a big like a very strong full, full back there Neve Quinn and she's well able to stop anything that's coming she's like a wall having a wall right in front of the goal so they, they have lots of trust her and rightly so when she stopped the ball well there just with her body so uh, we'll see more of that this week or this game sorry <laughs> Yeah, well, it's good, good, good running there as well from uh, Rachel Downey. She she was tracking the ball well and left her player to go towards Rachel Gaffney. So great decision made by her. Absolutely great hands from Rachel uh, Downey. No question about it. And, uh, we do have the injury to the main player. Just looking at the scoring stats, uh, clean of, you know prior to last weekend, like did both teams their forward lines have you know immersed some amount of uh, scores throughout the championship. Derry have very number of players and so will Meath and, and uh, it's just we didn't see it last week I don't know was it nerves we were discussing before the game or the win but um, there's less of, of that sort of aura this week so we'll only we'll see them performing at, at a better better level Ball breaks and it's uh, me that nearly got it but Derry are there again and it's uh, Raid McNichol who started this game very very well gets a ball back but Anya McGill probably wasn't expecting it and uh, Downey's in there with his 3-4 Meath players around but uh, Liz Kelly, you can see there. There's lots of support from the Derry players. They're, they're they're always they're never left by themselves. There's always a player there to pass the ball to, and, and it seems like they've been working on that. So that's where they're getting the, the turnovers and passing the ball off. So Rachel Downey of Balahi getting this ball into the corner position. Me there again with numbers. Again, all clear ball. These two are titanic struggle. I'd imagine we're going to have Anya McAllister surrounded again by me jerseys. Both teams, of course, uh, feeling that they left it behind them a little bit in Crow Park last weekend. There's a good block there, but I think a bit of a swing. I don't think uh, Mary Hegarty could do a whole lot about that. It was the bravery of the me player that went in, got the block, but she got the follow through with the hurl into the side of the face, I think. I and uh, the physio is down, keeping an eye here. That was a wide smack. <laughs> right smack good. it was. Yes. I think the whole crowd oohed when they, when they saw it. Very, uh, very energetic start to the game isn't it absolutely yeah everyone's going 100% for the ball and we're seeing a lot of attacks already um, it's, uh, and the forwards uh, are retaining the ball a wee bit better in this game Ellen Burke of course uh, also was involved in that 2017 win for me she's the one that's down captain of this me team might have 15 on her back but uh, she rarely plays in that position and she looks like she's okay did get a as he said a bit of a knock to the head there so they're all happy and everything being checked. Max Malloy, the sideline official, giving her a hurl there and uh, gesticulating, of course, that it is going to, after all of that, it is a dirty sideline cut. That uh, number nine, Anya McGill, is going to take. A lavy player, of course, who uh, cut two points against uh, Kilkenny in the semi final. That went extra time. Lovely cut across the field. Racing now out is Tara Dangerous. Murphy, but she decided to go back there. Rachel O'Neill trying to hold it up. Looked like it was uh, tough there on the Derry player. Good strike again, but me there again in numbers. All sorts of blocking and hooking and everything going on. Sophia Payne was in there to try and get that ball out. And the referee says it was a throw ball. It's going to be a free in. And this should be a tap over for Derry here to go in front. Again. All there from Ammonia. She read it well. But you'd have to feel, Kleena, no quarter being asked or given here by either team. And we've already had three uh, visits of the physio to the pitch. Yeah, but it just shows the intensity and everyone's fighting for the ball. No matter what, they're putting their body on the line. Um, even the goalie there <laughs> came out completely looking for the ball, trying to win it there. And you don't usually see that in, in many games. So she was completely going for it. So risking everything, but it's, it's worth risking it for for the... In the All Ireland final, it should be an easy point now for Aoife. 
Well, it's great to see that maybe the nerves of last week have uh, been shaken off by both teams and they're having a right cut at it here. But I still think it's going to be a tight enough encounter. But here's the chance anyway to Derry in front. And that's up and over the bar. And that, that might settle the nerves for Aoife Shaw as well. Lavi players had a phenomenal scoring record in uh, championship. But the cutout doesn't work out here and Aoife is able to get back in on it. Ball is flicked back out to Mary Hegarty going to have a shot at the pause. Dropping in, batting out again. Sophia Payne got to be careful here now. She's been tracked all the way there. It's out for a 45. And another good pressure there by the Derry forwards. Yes, but another short ball and uh, that, they were at full for that last week and so were Meath. And they really need to get the distance in the thing. That's two points they could have had and they missed. So they really need to uh, put it over but I think she was under pressure there and was shot. Was it Mary? Mary shooting there. So another chance out for uh, Aoife Shaw. You'd have to credit Mary Hegarty there the way she uh, got in there. Rachel McAllister. Meath were lucky there as well. It was yep. a miss hit by the goalie. Breeze I was blowing is blowing from our left hand side, so it should favour Aoife Shaw, but it's hard to know. It has been swirling around. Shaw gets it up well, and she's driven that over the bar. So two in the bounce there for Aoife, and a bit of a, a gift in a way from the Mead defensive unit there. So Claire Coffey, fine player is Claire, has won numerous soaring stars over the last decade. Ball nearly was taken down lovely there by Amy Gaffney, but there's a chance inside now here for Kira Foley. Good Foley goes being surrounded by red and white jersey, but there's a break of ball inside there. Could be kicked by Abby Donnelly. Ball is taken away though. By Nick Cassida. Eventually the ball is up along the wing. And again, Neve Quinn there, dropping the ball with her body. She reads the ball very well and knows exactly when to reach and when not to. But you would feel from a me perspective, if someone's going to make a run like that, they're going to have to be backed up because the Derry defence are swarming. That's it, but the Derry are doing that, and, and Meath don't seem to be doing that. There's not the same sort of tactical support runs at the moment. And I don't think Meath are really looking back for the pass either. It doesn't seem to be an instinct for them at the moment. They haven't seen any of it, so they need to do that with such a strong full back in the Derry side. They're not going to get past her very easily. Free being given anyway, Natifa Minogue over on the far side. He, of course, a, a dual star. Had a fine year with the uh, Mead Lady Footballers as well. And have a strike at this. Got it up good and high. It looks like it is accurate. The umpires seem to be liking it. And that's a fine score from the middle of the field there from Ethan Minogue. That means Mead back then within one here. Puck out. Doesn't go great now. And Mead have a little bit of an overlap here. Opportunity to level this game up with Emma O'Connell. And if Mead gave a gift to one and there's a gift to Mead at the other. I think they're maybe chinned off there. Um, I know that ball has shoot to a Mead player, but they'll be looking now to get the score back. They seem to have a wee bit of a lull now, but to get another score now, they need to get their momentum back. So three points apiece then. It was 3-1 and Mead have hit back with two quick fire ones of their own now. Ball knocked long there, but... Uh, Nafina, Sophia Payne gets in and works very hard there to get in over that ball but uh, again forming a bit of a scrum, she gets a knockback though, of that ball and Mead look like they're going to be able to come out from the back with it strong play Good. there yeah. and eventually it's it. Tracy King that's going to deliver this ball down into the forwards ball breaks, who will it work out for? It's the Royal Soda getting charged forward again it looks like Abby Donnelly going to have a strike on the ground, ball is right there the still to be broken away and it's the Derry defence. And you can see there, Lauren, Lauren McKenna seems to always be there for the um, for the handoff. She's always there supporting and then, you know, you're just feeding the ball in and they always know how to hit ahead of them before they even they even look up. But she seems to be the spare player, of course, with mm. uh, Ellen Burke playing back mm. as an extra player. And there she is now on that ball, looking to deliver it down into the corner, looking for a run out of Abby Donnelly. She's going to win the race to uh, this. Look at the spin inside now. Looks like she's been held up. She's going to get a free in. Advantage being awarded, but... Liz Fields, seen enough, Liz Dempsey, that is the match official, a well-experienced one of that, given the free in, and Mike Ryan of Tipperary coming in to uh, mark the line for where Aoife Minogue, I'd imagine, is going to step up a tight enough angle, but a chance out for me to go back in front, and uh, ever since Derry went 3-1 in front, it's been all Mead over the last uh, 
two and a half minutes or thereabouts. This is, of course, the Glen Diplex All Ireland Intermediate Championship final replay. There has to be a winner on the day for the Jack McGrath Cup. And Eva Minogue stands over this then for her third opportunity of the day. Tight enough angle now on the 20 metre line, just about 7 8 in from the far sideline. Gets a good strike on it again, though, and that's a ball is up and over the bar. And Aoife Minogue, we heard from Jane Dole and Clean at the start of the game that Aoife was questioning her own uh, match ability last day. She's got three here in the opening 13 minutes. That's it, and they need to be very careful not to be fine because. Oh, 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 oh. Strong run here now from. Surely a point now from Anya. Anya McAllister looking to get inside, flicking it out to uh, Shaw. Ball was broken down though. Claire Coffey keeping an eye on Aoife Shaw there. Aoife goes back for the return though. Knock the ball, knocked back, but never got the shout there. And, uh, and that's twice. Adaria had straight into blocks. There were the players. Uh, I think it was Emer McGuigan Mac- 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 there. She was in the square. Maybe a better ball for Anya to pass into the square, but they may be making the wrong decisions and hitting it into blocks, which is not the, the right. The right uh, Probably similar at both ends the way things have been yeah. going in the last few minutes, but there's a decent ball down for me then. Look at the uh, put the two point lead. That's right behind us here. Up and over the bar. That's a fine score. Amy Gaffney. She only took one look straight over the bar off her right side. That's it. Uh, make look like they found their flow at the moment. They're winning most of the balls here and the backs are very tight. You can see that in the tackle and they're not letting like, anything pass them. Five points to three then. It looks like Mead have an extra player out there at the moment. Just with the bit of space that they're creating. We know trying to go back and win this. And her long reach is able to get it and play the ball across here to Tracy King. Who is switch wings out at the moment to be able to get this ball clear. But it's well blocked down there by Derville O'Kane. A bit nonchalant from King. O'Kane gets the ball on. Going to have a shot off here. Dropping in. Batted away again. That was Ray McNipple dropping that ball in. But it's dangerous enough now. Derry going to swing onto it and chance to narrow the gap again to one point. It's up and over the bar. And again, we talked about it the last day clean in Crow Park. The goalkeepers, both of them, have a tendency to bat the ball back out. That's it. I don't know if they've worked on that during the week, but um, it's very dangerous. And, and especially when not, so many balls coming out and hop. I don't know if it's tactical or if it's just they're not getting the teams are getting the distance in. But that score came from uh, Derby McNichol's hard work trying to get the turn over there. There's Strong no run again. Strong running here by McKenna. The ball on the screen woman looking to flick it inside there towards uh, McNichol. She had to kind of get a touch high on it to get that ball back in her position. Clear coffee all over, but moving on now is here's Anya McGill. McGill, one and one to level it up again. And it seems to be cleaner whenever the ball is at either end. The, the forwards are maximising and doing an awful lot of defensive work to win the ball back. That's it. They're making they're they're, they're making up for what they, they lost last week. We're seeing there, Derby McNichol or Derlo Kane, sorry, putting a lot of work in. That's her second score that she's contributed to there. there and she's they're back. They're back in the group. Good agree. take there. This doesn't seem to be letting much go either. Yeah, Leah Lennon coming out of winning that ball. Looks like Annie McAllister standing over this. PJ shouting to the very backs there to pull out a wee bit. There's a lot of space in behind the half back line there, and if the ball gets yeah. there, the likes of Ethan Minogue could easily break through for a point there, no ball or two. So the medium side line at the minute is uh, Abby Donnelly and Kira Foley. As that ball is played in, Davis ball, a flick going to be on it. Clear cover where the keeper was coming for that, you'd have to feel Tara Murphy and Claire Coffey was just alert to the situation that could have been calamitous altogether it could have been. I don't know if she thought it was going out or was she distracted I'm not too sure so there's a lot of balls around the, around the goal mouth there that I have, have missed chances there but so we've had door. we've had 3-1 to Derry we've had 3 apiece we've had 5-3 for Mead and now it's 5 apiece so the cracking encounter here in this uh, Glen Diplex all Ireland Intermediate Camogie Championship final replay from St. Irnix Park in Clonus hopefully you're enjoying the action on the Camogie Association YouTube channel don't forget there has to be a winner today Jack McGrath won't be heading back to headquarters he'll be heading for Derry or Mead and we still have a lot of action to go the way the Derry crowd to my left hand side trying to get behind their team here now but that sideline cut not going well for Derry and it's going to be a sideline cut for me now subsequently I hear a lot of support here from uh, well <laughs> mostly Derry because we're in amongst the crowd but a lot of people have come to the game maybe who weren't there last week because they know it's going to be a brilliant game they saw last week how tight it was and how well matched the both teams are and uh, of course it has to be a result in the day so it's all or nothing today 
Minogue played that short there to her number 10, Abby Gaffney. Minogue got it back, give it back to Gaffney. Gaffney is a strike up and over the bar. Derry maybe a little bit of sleep on that one. That's it. Brighton is half, half back line. They seem to be sleeping away, but that's two scores that come now from the half back line because the, the Derry backs weren't tight enough on their players. And uh, Meath are, are doing very well at the long range shooting. Amy, Amy Gaffney with two points then for me. The la- her, their last two scores, one from the left hand side, one from the yeah. right hand side. So the hurl fell out of her hand, and I think maybe Liz is blowing up. Is Liz blowing up there for for her dropping the hurl and trying to hand pass? Yeah, I think that's uh, what the the scenario was. I don't know what else she was supposed to do in that situation when the hurl was pulled off her. Well, I think that's what PJ is uh, down here on the line, mm-hmm. just onto the fourth official about that. Uh, if the hurl is pulled off, what can I do then? But uh, Liz Dempsey had judged that it was uh, a drop of the hurl. That's it. So it's going to be a free and then free from Nog and a chance to open up the gap again. And, uh, Jerry Crow probably feels that that's a bit of justice here, so just to let you know that last uh, shot off a goal by Abby Gaffney wasn't the point, it was a wide and it remains five points apiece and that uh, shot there from uh, Aoife Minogue so two wides in the road in oh, from, uh, breaking through. Mead but the ball breaks in the middle Derry getting a touch back on him Minogue trying to get in and disrupt it but it's going to be Derry that looks like they have the numbers there to be able to keep position of this ball getting in there as well Rachel O'Neill so five points apiece it remains look at the drive out of it there now is uh, Manny McAllister McAllister with the shot off dropping it in Ball comes back off the hand of the keeper off the upright and it's a dangerous one here now eventually flicked out here now Claire Coffey that goal is living a charmed life down there Coffey getting this ball off pressure coming on now from uh, me all of a sudden looks like she overplayed the ball there Leah Devine and now all of a sudden little bit of pressure on the me defence and they're just making some of the wrong calls here that's it 100% that was completely uh, Aoife put pressure on there but oh my that was such a, a goal chance there Um goalie was so lucky there Meath were very lucky there that it didn't go in after hit the post um, but Owen McAllister is driving on here she's showing up a lot more than she did last week even though she was brilliant last week but she's driving through with balls there and it's all passed there to Mary Hegarty their club, club mates they, they can read each other very well now we have a Hawkeye situation here similar to Crow Park the Vinci went with the point it was very very tight Now we wave the wide, so so Liz Dempsey now got in. Umpire on the point flag, obviously got. I don't know whether didn't hear the umpire on the left with the goal flag. Came out and waved it as a point. Then they've changed their mind. Now it's on as a point. So I don't know if Max Malloy got involved in that. There, it was close. I probably would have heard that it was over the bar. So Derry in front after that tight enough effort for me for sure. Well, again, I another ball. Bring the ball to Derry Crow doing their best here now to cheer their folks home here before the half time break. We still have ten minutes potentially to go. And eventually it breaks down around the middle. And this hasn't let up since the throw ball in the start, has it, Kleena? No, it hasn't. It's been tough for that. And both teams are completely going for it. And it's brilliant to see the forwards fighting just as hard for the ball as the backs. And a lot of turnovers. Um, and we're seeing a lot of them drop balls. So they only need <laughs> one of the teams only need one of them to go wrong. There's Lauren again driving out. She's been heroic in this first 20 minutes. But the, the times of, let's say, dominance for either team, there seemed to be only a couple of minutes because, as we saw, you know, Derry were 3-1 up, then it was 5-3 uh, to, to me. You know, it, it's then swung back now here again, the situation that it's... Uh, you'd have to give great credit, I think, to the Derry half-back line. They just seem to be stopping now an awful lot of ball in the last couple of minutes. That's it, and they're feeding out to a lot of support, which is in the middle, middle third here from the likes of Owen McAllister. They're, they're Aoife and Lauren and Anya seem to be in the, mid- in, in the middle of everything. And Rachel Downey as well, she's been in every single single rock that I've seen she's really fighting hard for the ball so um, they're do, they're doing if, if you're a Mead fan sitting at home what, what do you think has to happen maybe defensively they just need to get a little bit tighter I think they've been rattled there a little bit in the last few minutes they have but uh, I mean, Mead are doing badly I have to say like it's, it's, it really is just tip the tat and every, every player is just trying the hardest for the ball but the dairy support it's hard to, it's hard to mark that there's so much support off the ball and 
there's options every time the dairy they are possession. Well, we wait and see how the next couple of minutes play out. Derry are in front, six points to five. And the free then comes from Rachel Downey, dropping this ball in. Gap, charge, that's it. Going up and getting a touch on it. Looking to spin away. Aoife, shortening on to her right-hand side and turning it over the bar. And Aoife Shaw having a day. She's having a good start. Aoife, oh, very composed player. I mean, her skills are just, uh, you know, she's one of the probably most skilled players in, in, in this championship at the moment. Um, very but composed and a brilliant skill there as well to turn around and take it on the other side. Absolutely. With a corner forward though of her talent, she should be able to shoot off her right-hand side, especially... You know, come and look like she was going to take it on the left, took it on the right, and it's put it now in a situation where they're back two points in front. This is a dangerous ball in, though. Me looking to come charging forward. Got to be careful with this now. Neve Cribben being tracked down there by a well couple done. of Mead players. Gets a lovely clearance away, though. Out towards the sideline here. It's going to be a Mead ball. Dale will be happy enough with that. Uh, wasn't bad to straight away into the, into the full forward space. <laughs> Key Devine enough. gets his touchdown along the line, but it's well read there by the Derry defence, but it's going to be a sideline cut again for Mead. Neve Quinn just getting it away out of the uh, danger area. Derry warming up uh, a player there by the looks of him. She's outside of bib, so I would suge- that would seem to suggest that maybe Shannon O'Connor is going to be coming in. Although I think uh, Max Malloy is saying that she should have a bib on. As that ball is played in. Getting a return on it again. Minogue turns and up and over the bar. And at the moment, it's the Aoife Shaw here in Clonus. Aoife Shaw at one end, Aoife Minogue at the other and it is seven points to six here. That's seven. All they need is a, a tiny, a tiny bit of space there. Just a wee slip up there from from Derbla and uh, even Manuka had it in her hand, and we only knew it was going on place. So Shannon O'Connor is getting ready to come in here. They're not going to wait to half time. They're going to get a immediate in as uh, me cut off that ball there. Leah Devine steps out around the uh, challenge Sophia Payne goes ahead of her probably needs to be behind her though to help her out because there's a lot of gap between there and the goal and uh, Leah Devine eventually Payne gets back to help her out but it's Derry to have turned it over brilliant support there from Derry good support play play. and you've mentioned that all in the opening 25 minutes it is the support play but Minogue Minogue seems to be everywhere Aoife Minogue seems to be everywhere too as this ball breaks here Abby Donnelly gets a Spock on it, trying to get it here towards Amy Gaffney, but the ball is again being turned over by Derry. Rachel McAllister winning the ball off Aoife Manoog there. She's been marking her, trying her best to mark tightly there to the game so far. McAllister getting that ball forward, but it's cut out by Devine. Diagonal ball forward here now. Me trying to get level here. Good change of pace there by Amy Gaffney. Flighting the ball in. Dangerous ball! Take it away! It was either, I think it was the defender that was in there that got that knock on it. Support there again, Anya. But going to come out with it again, Neve Quinn. The Derry crowd now happy with maybe the over bus challenge. And eventually... I mean, you can just see the strength there of Neve Quinn. She was trying to do the tackles, no fear at all. And the uh, player was in between her and, the, and, and Neve, Neve. So Derry, Derry making a change. And it's an interesting one now. Shannon O'Connor has gone in to the full forward line and replacing Anya McGill. So... Tactical change, it would seem to be. Oh, and it was doing very well. She was, uh, she's getting the ball, the, the ball there. But Shannon O'Connor, very exciting player. Um, she's sort of one of those those forward players where you always get excited when you, when she's on the ball. You don't know what she's going to do. And there, maybe they're bringing her in now, trying to get a goal because it's, it's sort of that time in the game when they need something to, to push so it forward. Do you think it's going to be Emer McGuigan tracking Aoife Minogue now? Is that what? It, maybe they're kind of similar height players. That might be the way it was. Uh, it was Rachel McAllister so far. Have or they re- changed over there? Yeah. Well, it's going to be... It's going to be like for like, I think, anyway, in the middle of the field, the way they're, they're going to uh, make the move here, because looking at Shannon O'Connor, you know, Sophia Payne, there's a similar height difference now uh, there, so... Obviously, they just feel they want a bit more height around the middle. Well, maybe last week, um, you know, both halves were a wee bit dull, and there wasn't much of a change-up. Maybe that's what Derry are trying. This yep. half, they're trying to change the players. Um if they don't see much happening then we're trying to put a wee bit of energy into the into the team and Shannon will bring that definitely well one lady that might like to lose is Anya McAllister she's the one that's down at the moment receiving a little bit of treatment Anya has been from a dairy point of view covered an awful lot of grass so over and back across the pitch here Anya's a leader in the team and she has been for the past few years she's a, one of the best players in the county and that's said she's up now they'll be happy to see that she wouldn't go down very easily 
long range shooter as well, which is a big advantage to Derry. Well, but we haven't seen many of the long range um, shots yet from Derry. We've got many long range points compared to Meath. Um, maybe that's tactical, I'm not too sure. So the Derry backroom team, some of them have been up among us here, down now having a line with PJ and Mullen. PJ, of course, had told us just before the off that uh, went out on holidays on Tuesday, flew back, I think was it yesterday or the day before. Himself and his wife, of course, part of the backroom team as well. The kids and uh, parents are watching it out in uh, holidays. I'm sure, as I said, the O'Mullins will be back out. Shannon out, very exciting players to get in hand out. You know, well, an opportunity here now, looking to finish strong. Going into half time break, that's a fine strike out on the left hand side. Derry haven't had too many wides. I think by my record, that's uh, actually their first. From a tight enough angle, it probably wasn't the shot that was on, though, was it? No, it wasn't, but uh, maybe that's just nerves coming on the field for the first time. We'll see. There wasn't that much support though, available. We're looking at the ball when she had it there, so maybe that was a factor as well. Ball oh, breaks down. It's Mino going to take this on. Been tracked. It looked like she overplayed it, I thought, there on the steps, but being disrupted there. Getting in there and uh, winning the ball, Dervlo Kane. Brilliant in- teamwork there. Interchange of passes there with Anya McAllister. Plays a short ball, but Sophia Payne read the break there away from uh, Shannon O'Connor, who's in the game, of course, in the last few minutes. Shannon come in for Anya McGill. Four minutes of additional time, as I was thinking it was definitely going to be north of two anyway. We had a couple of stoppages in the game. The physio has been on a few times. Just goes to show you, these two teams are having a right cut off this game. Knowing, of course, that the Jack McGrath Cup will be decided today. This is the Glen Dimplex All Ireland Intermediate Camogie Championship final replay. If you've just joined us, good afternoon to you. We're live here from St. Tiernix Park in Clonus. And it is Derry that hold the upper hand. There's no eight point leads like there was last weekend. At the moment, anyway, we still have about four minutes of time to be played. Aoife Minogue then with a chance to level it up. She's done this a couple of times this half. Four points she's had in this game already. Similar to her namesake, Aoife Shaw for Derry. So Minogue having a strike at this very tight. She's got it up good and high. I think she's pulled it though to the left and wide. Chance gone a big and it's her second wide. Characteristic from Aoife, but that's two, it's two frees now she's missed now. Maybe just nerves there. Tight angles, you're right there. Here's Anya, I think she'll be one on this one. There you go. So, Mead's flow just seems to have been disrupted in the last while. It's this lovely bit of play by Emer McGregor. Now here to Mary Hegarty. No one near. She goes on a bit of a diagonal to put her two uh, points up. Good score. But you'd have to question the Mead defence there and the fact that they are playing with an extra player back. All that space that Mary Hegarty had. That's it. Derry just went in the middle third and then they had the runners on the, on the wings and they seem to be taking it. And brilliant ball there by Mary. And you were saying last week, maybe Derry sh- should have gone for, for points a few times rather than dropping short. They seem to be sticking everything over now. Bar that last, last wide for Shannon. Ball breaks from Derry again. Can they open a three-point lead going in at half time here? Mairead McNichol got the opening score of the game for Derry. Playing that ball back to Dervlo Kane. She didn't really look though. She played that ball towards Anya McAllister. Ball is intercepted now. Chance for uh, Mead to come out from the back. Claire or Coffey plays that ball along the ground towards... Uh, uh, Olivia Halloran went for the return pass not what Mead want though they need ball to hand ball. ball breaks out charge it forward here on the McNichol looking to play this ball in dangerous enough ball again dropping in but it's well cut there by Tara Murphy right ball out but it's giveaway ball there ball breaks on the ground Mead have numbers but so did Derry looking to char- change things around now Emer McGuigan playing that ball back looks like an advantage to Derry looking to charge forward on it now uh. Claire Coffey is there though to intercept it it's going to be a free in Aoife and Derry right. have a chance to be three up here. That's it. And Aoife, Aoife, that was Aoife Cassidy there in the ball there, and she made the right decision. She was going to strike, and she realised that she was going to strike into the into the block. So that just shows, you know, some of the players are maybe more composed, or maybe it's experience on the ball, but they seem to be um, coming back into it. Maybe the wrong decision by Dervla there, but a lot of the balls that are coming in are, are good to the forward lane, and most of them are coming from the middle middle third there. Brilliant work done to win the puck outs there, and good, good balls as well coming out from Neve Neve Gribbon there. Um, good distance in them as well 
I, I had said to you a couple of minutes ago that the period of dominance seemed to be very small. You know, that was up until about the 20-minute mark, but definitely the last 10, you know, Mead's chances have been very, very few, and Derry have just kicked on here a little bit. That's it. They just need to make sure that they're making the most of it, because if they... If they if if Meath get a purple patch in the second half, then they need to make sure that they have that buffer, you know, buffer space to, to, to allow that to happen. That Aoife Cassidy down, I didn't see what happened there. Could be a hurl across the hand or something like that. Yeah, just sit there. It goes to show as well, you know, all the dairy players, you know, from the half back line are, are on attack. Um, you know, Aoife, I think she's number six there, centre half back, and she's up on the half, in, the, in the full forward line trying to yeah. get a score. So, you know, it, it goes to show that they're all they're all looking for the score. If the opportunity's on, they want to take it. But maybe a, a lot of that down to the manager and everything that he allows. You know, a bit of expression that these players, as long as they're covered, can make that run forward. That's it, and that's what makes the game exciting for the players as well. And so that's what it's all about: expressing yourself on the field. Eva Shaw with a chance to make it a three-point game. And she has done that now as we enter the closing stages here. Nine points to six. Mead go along with this puck out from Tara Murphy hitting towards the halfway line. Ball breaks out. Trying to get across. Red there by Lauren. Briefly. Avian Lally was trying to disrupt that ball going forward. Of course, Avian that started the game in place of uh, Grace Coleman. Somehow we expect we'll see Grace at some point in the second half as uh, ball is won over that far side. But the referee said there was a foul committed on the Mead player as she cleared. And it's going to be uh, a free that uh, looks like Maeve Clinch is going across to take. Mead probably have one last opportunity here to get a score, but it's been a while since they've scored. Going back now nearly on 10 minutes. Ball played long. A good take there. I thought it was going just through the hand, but coming charging onto it. Olivia Halloran looking to keep this ball at play. Dangerous enough ball, but it's well read there by Rachel Downey. Downey surrounded by green jerseys. No free. Mead have turned it over. Strike coming in from Abby Donnelly. Crossed the face of goal all the way. It nearly took the cameraman out, and it's gone out for a wide ball. Very well read there by Rachel, but. That should be it, I would imagine. Just in the last 10 minutes, Mead have hit four wides, and that maybe has. Uh, told an awful lot of the chances gone big and as the puck out comes half time score Derry in the ascendancy here have they hit the button at the right time just before the break nine points to six and Brendan Skeen has got to go to the well again with this me team to try and get them to come out all guns blazing for the second half here Cleaner. that's it but Derry will be doing the same alert from last week and that will be putting the hair there and they'll be driving on and they'll know exactly what it takes to push on to get this one you can see from the body language both teams are going in with the heads up. I think the second the second half is just going to be the exact same. It's going to be all guns blazing and very level. You know, despite the score, well, it's only three points the difference, is it? But despite the score, it is a very level game. But you know, I noticed there um, on the puck out, um, you know, Meath are Meath aren't really as in tune with the ball or as in tune to the puck out whenever they're they're running out there. Um, whereas Derry, all their players were straight back out after the scores or the wides, and they are on their players. They were they were right in right place. So. Um, Maybe, maybe yeah, that, that's a fair point to make that I actually think Derry are more in tune with the Mead puck out than probably the Mead players are yeah, on occasion exactly and sort of jogging out not full pace like little things like that they maybe won't make a break again but they certainly add to the whole momentum of the thing and you know Derry just seem to be more they have more leaders on the field I feel at the minute they have more players breaking through as I said again and again that, that middle third you know they're they're sweeping up everything more or less and anything that comes in the backs Rachel Downey seems to be there very close to the goals all the time as well as Neve Quinn and a very like, very strong back line and, and feeding the ball in but the only thing I would say is Derry need to maybe get more balls into the wings and, and get scores from there especially the far wing there but we'll see maybe the, the wind was a factor there but um, Ray McNichol here and Mary Hegarty especially contributing loads when, when you look at it though if, I, if I'm a me fan sitting at home three points down clean up where the score is going to come from because again it seems to be Minogue that despite the strong running of Amy Gaffney maybe Emma O'Connell in the opening stages that kind of position has dried up for them you know an awful lot still coming off of Minogue they're going to need somebody else you would feel in the next half hour to take a grasp of this game aren't they? Yes, but I thought they would have learned from last week like you know the dairy full back line are so strong and I think Meath are honestly better off just pucking it over um, to take the crying in a wee bit too far I think they also need to take advantage out of the fact that the dairy half back line have a lot of room in behind them and, and 
the very full backs are having, having really pulled out to fill that. So if they can drop maybe the balls in there, you know, and make if uh, the likes of uh, Ashley and Gaffney aware of the ball, you know, or aware of that that they're going to be doing that, then they can easily run on. I think that's the best way for them to be getting the scores at the moment because you know that's that. 45 air, between the yeah. 45 and 21 is the best distance for them to be scoring and the, the full back line won't be able to come out and leave their players obviously at that stage I agreed because that, that middle third area there seems to be it's helping Derry you know they're, they're winning the rook ball if you could call it that so maybe me just as you mentioned need to be taking it out of that you know, even if I was kind of from a me point of view, if you trade for the next five ten minutes, maybe it'll get profit out of it. That's it. But the issue is, puck outs. Both, both goalies have similar puck out distance, and it's landing nearly exactly in midfield. Yes. And, yes. and dairy midfielders are so strong. And Ethan Minogue has only won maybe two or three puck outs, um, and even you know when the, when the ball breaks as well, dairy seems to be sweeping off and winning the ball every time. Especially the likes of Derva O'Kean there. She's a very nippy player, and she's just giving up and offloading, and offloading. And there always seems to be a player there. You know that. That gives the players a lot more confidence when they're going for the ball because they know they're going to be supported. Uh, looking at a Derry point of view, then uh, PJ Mullen, you know, they had an eight-point lead the, the, at, at early doors of the second half the last day. They have a three-point lead now. I'm sure he's drilling that into them. We can't let it slip again. Yeah. I would fault Derry at the short balls. Um, there's really no excuse for it, especially you know the wind's not really bad at all today. Um, they're just taking the wrong options a lot of the time. I think it's maybe three or four, maybe five, even short balls there that should have either been delivered into the full forward line or put straight over the bar. So he'll yeah, be talking about that, but um, they're getting a lot of balls down the wings. If they can maybe convert them a wee bit better, runners off, or if, if, if they turn them sort of and do the loop round, I'm not too sure, but um, they just need to convert. They, they have, they are forward, they are, or they are in front, but. They are missing a lot of chances for points that could give them more of a comfort sort of cushion and um, if the time comes that means sort of are pushing ahead there. So we'll have to see, but um, I'm not really sure how they can get around that bar. You know, it's hard to sort of change your awareness Mindset. of the game yeah. in the middle of, of an all-around final, but we'll see. Uh, one last thing then PJ wasn't afraid to make a switch and like, we, when you would feel that maybe there wasn't a whole lot going wrong for Derry at the time but he obviously felt that you just needed to curb maybe Aoife Minogue a little bit in the middle you know putting somebody extra in there of a you know say a similar height I, I, you know I don't think as, you're, as you correctly pointed out you know Rachel McAllister uh, was doing the job on, 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 uh, on Aoife Minogue but having you know Emer McGuigan out there as well it just, it's, a, it's an extra tall body in the middle that maybe makes Minogue work for the ball a little bit harder doesn't it well, that's it exactly and I remember <laughs> I had a marquee for Minogue a few years ago in a late game and I mean she was twice as tall as me and what, you know one on every wall that was coming high and that is her strong point you know and her height I mean it's, it's phenomenal compared to other players on the, on the, on the, on the field and we really need to make the most of that but they're not really dropping the balls down on top of her as they should be I know she's being marked very tightly but she should still be running those balls but um, good tactical move and, and back to PJ you know making that decision some manager maybe wouldn't want to do that they'd be conscious of how that would affect the player that's coming off or the team but I think it's very refreshing and, and why not if they, if they have a very strong sub bench she can come on and, and change the game up or maybe bring a bit of energy or different styles of play as well so Shannon O'Connor especially now I know she's missed two there but you know if she can get the ball in the hand it's a very exciting player if she can get in close to the goal who knows what will happen but um, that's the sort of, the sort of energy that she brings to the team well, we know that uh, Mead, all throughout the championship, have uh, scored goals. They even got two, of course, uh, last weekend. They may need the similar amount to be able to take this title away from Derry because Derry are the ones that are in front and defensively the way they're playing, well, it looks like it's going to be very tight if Mead are to get goals. They may need to come in the opening 10 minutes as well to give this game a shot in the arm in the Mead uh, scenario. But uh, in the last 10 minutes, after a game that was helter-skelter, to and fro between both, it is Derry that have uh, put... The brakes on, I suppose, a little bit on Mead's progression. I'd say Mead are going to make a few tactical switches uh, too. The older subs have headed to the dressing room, so it looks like there's maybe there's going to be a few changes for the second half. We'll wait and see. But here at half time, in a cracking encounter anyway, in the Glen Dimplex All Ireland Intermediate Camogie Championship final replay for a chance to win the Jack McGrath Cup. Will it be Derry? Will it be Mead? Well, it's the ladies from Ulster who are in front at the moment. They lead by nine points to six. Rejoin us shortly.
Welcome back here then to uh, St. Irnix Park. This MC. And the teams didn't take too long here at half time. And don't see any change on me just coming out there. I was expecting one, but. Ball is in the second half. And where will Jack McGrath lie? We should know maybe in the next uh, 30 odd minutes. You never know though with these two teams. There's opportunity here straight away for Emer McGuigan. Another one Practice of those shots. the halfway line. Dangerous Good. ball in. What a Brian. score. I thought that was my job. I have to say. I think they're there. Brilliant, brilliant score. What a way to start the half and get there a bit of a boost. They're sort of setting the tone for themselves, aren't they? We all remember though what happened uh, last week. Four score for Derry in the second half and then Mead came streaming back into it. But again like if, if you're Brendan Skeen and you're told me to go out here and start strong Gary get the first score it just chips away at you a little bit I think uh, uh. anyway ball has gone out over the line here we're just down on the line there at half time we saw P. John Mullen having uh, a chat with Sean O'Connor well read there by Lauren wasn't it telling her to have an opportunity maybe have a cut at goals what? if it does a crew and Derry hunting now in packs here and me just seem a little bereft of what to do. I said they seem a wee bit all over. They yeah, really seem to have him have brilliant ball, brilliant ball into Sean. There you go. Mary she Hegarty now giving there. it to Shannon O'Connor. Shannon was urged by PJ Mullen to cut in. That's oh, what she's doing here. She's still going. Shannon O'Connor! Take no. in the hand. I think Shannon's lacking like a wee bit of composure at the moment. I don't know, it's an urge. That's, that's three balls she wasted now. She took it three times in the hand there, and there was support coming from Mary Hegarty there. but she probably was thinking of PJ's word only about two minutes ago to yeah, cut in and keep going <laughs> so again, a chance Aoife Mano bearing down again charge it forward a charge going high ball it could be an opportunity it's well well taken you'd have to say Brilliant, by Neve Griffin in that goal she, she must have controlled it three times on the hurley. That's what she's learned from last week. She was banded out last week. Where she's taking the touch now. Greg Bowes retaining the, 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 retaining the ball for herself. Making sure that Meath can come in and bat it in from the, uh, from the block. I'd imagine Minogue was thinking, oh, just aim towards the crossbar, see what happens. But at this stage, I think if I'm a Meath player, I'm getting these balls over the bar here, clean. 100% it. you need it just to keep the points ticking. And they're just not going to get past the, the full back line unless, unless they're... The ball backs are pulled out out of uh, December. Emer McGuigan then they got the opening score of this second half, making it ten points to six. Get the ball forward. Raid McNichol got the opening score of the game. Has she got? No, it's tail away. Just because to tell you about that breeze here a little bit. Got the right idea there, but the Derry players are certainly going for their scores. They're driving forward. That there's lots of energy about them. Loads of energy, as you said, from Derry at the minute. But this game has been helter skelter. Ball won there by. Ellen Burke, back it goes, Mead. Trying to play it forward there, Tracy King. If Manuk is pointed there. I don't mean to keep harping on about it. I'm apologising to any of the Mead fans that are at home, but the body language at the minute, just the shoulders seem to be drooped a little bit on the Mead team. I agree, and they seem to be all over the place. There's not much structure to this. They seem to just be, be running after trying to chase the ball and basically chase whatever they're doing. They're not, they're not having a chance to impose their own game. Mead, of course, were victorious in their only time in the final in 2017. It went to a replay, of course, to beat Cork in Limerick that day. Of course, Derry lost in 2001, but won in 2012. Also, after replay, they beat Galway that day. So neither of these teams, when they've won their All-Ireland title, have done it in Crow Park. And they won't be doing that today. It will be, though, in St. Hunix Park in Clonus. Okay, I'm just trying to work out where the sun, the sun's coming out there. Is that in the goalkeeper's eyes, or is it doesn't seem to be? Good cut by McGuigan all the way across the field. We saw well, the yeah. run there of uh, Lauren McKenna. McKenna trying to make herself a nuisance there, but Mead have turned it over. Ball is into a corner, but McGuigan is trying to make her way back to win this position. Being tracked all the way there by Amy Gaffney. Ball is uh, flicked back, and she's able to pick up her own ball there, Neymar McGuigan. Playing the ball to Rachel McAllister. Of course, started this game like she did last week. 
Might have 24 on her back, but she is on. Ball is over the far side where Leah Devine turns back on her right and plays the ball forward towards Minogue. Has support there for Emma O'Connell. Minogue doing well. Showed the ball and still going. Gets inside Nicosida. Still going. Helping her out though is Emma O'Connell. Plays the ball of Edgy McCall. Left her behind her. Probably should have got it a little bit earlier than she did. Trying to keep the ball alive. Stands over, but looks like uh, Leah's in there to win it. That's Leah Lennon. That's well Number three in her back, but she has covered some amount of space in that half back line as well. She really has. And that's that's uh, well well dealt with by the backs because even the notion had that much space to have the ball in the first place, but they dealt well. You saw Rachel there; she's very smart. She's moving back, making sure that uh, waiting until Aoife did the offload and then uh, put more pressure on her, and then and then caused the, the uh, overturn. So it's well done by them. And, they seem to be winning a lot of the rock balls as well that are sort of the, the, the balls and the tackles just down to hard work you can see Ball from Minogue breaks. there she's, lost, she's not being marked very tightly at the moment when she's doing a lot of work in the middle there at the minute but just where is the spur going to come from see Jane Dolan that joined us of course at the start of the commentary Jane of course uh veteran of many a campaign for Mead not playing this year but in here helping out on the water today even having a player like that to have a quiet word in the ear can make a lot of a difference for especially maybe the younger teams in the panel just to compose them a wee bit and maybe that's what Mead needs is another composer and to be able to implement their game plan lovely take there by Maeve Clinch mm. it's going to be a, a bit of a slower half Mm-hmm. Seems to be a bit of, bit of a slower half than, than the first. Yeah. And tiredness seeping in slowly. Ten points to six. The Glen Dimplex All Ireland Intermediate Camogie Championship final replay from St. Park in Clonus. And Derry in the driving seat at the minute. Mead needs something. Six minutes into the second half. And Minogue looking to get forward on it. Derry messing around with it a little bit. Free given to Minogue. Taps the ball inside ball breaks but Liz Dempsey's going to call it back and it's Mead's opportunity to get their first score since the 24th minute it's a long time to go without a score especially when they came from 3-1 down to lead 5-3 That's it. scores have dried up for Mead I think it's for, for, it's, I think it's Mead's detriment that they're relying so heavily on Aoife for, for scores and just for, for pushing the game forward i you get to see what they're like without her because she seems to be everywhere and she's really the one who's sort of pushing things forward and, and mo- making moves um, and she can't she can't win the ball everywhere but it's maybe a score but we'll, we'll push them on a wee bit Aoife Minogue then with her fifth point opportunity puts it in and over the bar and that might just give a shot in the arm for me they badly need something Point apiece in this second half then. Ten points to seven. Ball breaks out. Will that give the shot? Good. Finch down along the line. Good pressure there by Mairead. That also got hit there. Abby Donnelly just lost that ball. Lauren McKenna, who again has covered some amount of ground there with Nick Cassida. Pirouetting around. Three Mead players around. Overplayed the ball. And a chance here for me. Jane Dolan now. That just goes to show the pressure that Mees are applying now because Aoife is the one who gives the ball off way too easily. She's a very composed player. Um, she nearly looks like she's moving in slow motion because she's so relaxed in the ball. But it just goes to show there's three players around her there and they weren't giving her any, any space to move at all. There is a change here for me that, that happened at half time. Obviously, Sonia Leonard of Drummerie is in. She's wearing number 19. So, Aoife Minogue standing over. It's a similar position to her last minute free against Derry and Crow Park. That was the chance, of course, to win the game for me. Comes up to this, sends it on its way. It's going to pull to the left, though. And out to the left and wide. Missed opportunity, you would feel. Uh, mistake. I'm correct in saying this. She missed the one on the final out the right post. Isn't that right? Yes, it so, was on the right, so uh, that's yeah, gone on the left. Maybe the breeze, the yeah. Opposite, yeah. She would need to be not missing those, especially with, with me. Derry went short with the puck out, trying to get it Not forward and maintain position. Looking to come on to that ball there and do it very well as Mary Hegarty. Covered an awful lot of ground, Mary, in the last while as well. 
breaks away from Aoife Shaw racing back though to be able to get it is Leah Devine has her keeper to help her out Tara Murphy from Kilmesson playing it outside again to Claire Coffey looking to play it up along the line Alexa go long rather than short dangerous ball Minogue underneath it gets her hand on it does she no breaks away from her in there and doing a good job on her is Rachel McAllister ball is on the ground Derry have won it back though going to be played down by Rachel Downey Coffey is there though ahead of Shaw Coffey takes it into her control now looking to drive forward with it here loses the ball on the ground might work out for me though still on their own 65 they haven't got over the halfway now they have taken on a bit of a run here by the wing forward Olivia Halloran playing the ball in short now could work out here Foley loses possession of it though looks like going to break out with it there easily as Neve Quinn has played a starring role in there as well that looked like a very hard challenge across Quinn but the ball is played forward Minogue gets a hurl up and knocks it down trying to keep it moving door Derry getting possession of it on their own half uh, of the halfway line at the minute ball is played on there by Minogue trying to get it towards O'Halloran ball is close to the line but Rachel Downey is in there to win that again Brilliant the Blackie crowd beside me here cheering on their clubmate lovely take and run here by Nikasada going into the challenge Maeve Clinch stepped across there and it, this is the interpretation of this rule which way you see it yeah, but Kelly, I got there seemed like it was just a clear tackle on the ball I don't think she was making any attempt I don't know how she could have won the ball out of that tackle so it's uh, I think she's going to get carded I wouldn't be surprised it was quite a hit I think it was two players she had at once she was sandwiched in between the two of them so yeah but it is it? of course depending on the interpretation of the rule here now by the referee what she saw whether it was uh, rough play or whether this should have been a decision by the attacker to sidestep I think Emer was trying to sidestep the, the first player that, the first week player that was there in whatever way it, it happened but but isn't it a crazy rule ultimately oh, in ladies games it has to be eliminated this year you'd feel exactly and it's just it's just another sort of obstacle for, for females to be able to play full you know um, physical full contact camogie like, and that's what that's what they want we've got to be a bit more contact this year but going down on it. so Liz Liz Dempsey is going in yeah and So, I do know that Mike Ryan didn't have a word there with uh, Liz Dempsey and Liz has gone in now to Maeve Clinch and uh, it's a yellow card for Maeve Clinch so. I think that was the right decision personally Kelly and just the way the way she went in it was sort of like she was going for the tackle and she was looking to bring her down there's no attempt at all for the ball she, she couldn't have retained it so it wasn't really a clear attempt to try and get the ball off yeah, but, and, off I, and I'd imagine that's what she's been asked there by the mead player you know but it's hard to tell. I know when you're, you know, at, when you're looking on it, there's no way of knowing what the, the, the intention was. But just from the way it looked, I think that was the right call from this. But, but that's why I think the rule needs to be changed because it's very hard on the referee to make a decision about whether it was rough play or whether it's a defender standing their ground. Uh, and even last week we saw Rachel Downey. She got, she was completely, uh, well, she was taken out. In other words, and, and you know, she was given a free against her. And, she was only after lifting the ball and she barely had time to lift her head and that's where the, the issue is you know you're, how are you supposed to know that a player is coming at you and try to side upset them when you just have possession of the ball um, so I think there's enough pressure now to change it and it'll be the right thing for next year With Lauren McKenna then that is the inter party and uh, she's gingerly walking up but but that's one player you don't want to lose uh, at this stage. Well, the Ballast Green woman has played a serious game over here today. The free to be taken by McAllister. Long range effort. Batted away. And uh, I think a combination of clinch there and Tara Murphy knocking that out for a 45 that I'd imagine Aoife Shaw is going to come out and take her first sh- shot in anger at the goalpost for the second half. She's had five points to her name so far. Seems to be in there at the minute. Peter's shouting on, asking her how she is, but yeah she gingerly that left leg is uh, being stretched out at the minute by Lauren McKenna she obviously felt full force on that leg there as she came charging forward so Aoife Shaw Alavi standing over this puts it up good and high dropping over the black spot there you go at this stage Killian you do not want Gary Gary don't want to pick up their foot off the pedal they're really pushing on here and they can't, they can't fall asleep now. They really need to push on because four points is a dangerous lead. Absolutely. So Aoife Shaw opening up the gap again. And Mead now need, I think, 
to climb a mountain seriously and probably need to find the back of Neve Cribben's net if not once possibly twice I did say at half time I reckon they'd need two goals to win this game and I can't see that Derry defence giving it up too easy ball breaks well taken well, well taken and Leah Lennon she's having a day of days isn't she she is she's brilliant she's only I think 18 or 19 years old it's her first year on the panel and she's absolutely fair up. she's coming out with every single ball which is so motivating for the team I actually need to point out as well Mary Hegarty and I think it's a Maeve Clinch from Maeve Clinch from, uh, from Meath they're having a brilliant battle two very strong players and it's tip for tat tip for tat both players are winning balls very fascinating watch Derry Crow getting behind her team here now as Derry come on the attack again with Ray McNichol it'll be some score if it goes over the bar what a score that is a match winning score in lots of ways isn't it I'm red red I think I was took off last week maybe 20 minutes to go and I'm not sure it was due to, to injury or it was due to performance but my god she is making up for this, this game that is an unbelievable point but when you're knocking balls over from that distance without really looking Tina it's going your way isn't it oh, 100% and to have the confidence to do that and feel like you're allowed to do that it just goes to show how much PJ is and still confidence in this team Leah Lennon having a big day now the Balahi crowd happy with her on the far side but getting inside there is Emma O'Connell charging in now they're trying to get on the break is Minogue ball and ball back out by Derry shot low on but it's got to be cleared away now got to, it's careful Quinn look to come out ran into the hip there of the Mead player play continues referee said ball picked off the ground interesting decision I thought that was going to be blown off by charge or for obstruction there she got a very, very hard smack on the head there when she was lifting the ball out there now Aoife has to go for goal I think she'll go for yeah, goal yeah you'd feel stage. here now Minogue that's what she's lining up to do she's going to connect with this on the 20 metre line she's not, she's not tapping this over the bar I don't think no I don't think so um, she'll be making up for the penalty but look at the number of players no, the on number that that's goal. on the line here I'm counting about 8 of them Minogue going for this strike ball is batted away by that Derry defence big sure wall on the line win. ball is still in there could be anybody's at the minute it's hard to call who's going to come out with it it looks was it Lennon again getting that ball out here or was it the goalkeeper it was maybe Neve Cribben that eventually knocked it out working it out eventually Derry between them but it's out over the line but it's not a goal that's the most important thing exactly. from a Derry point of view exactly and unbelievable Lauren McKenna again she was taking the ball there and she was taking about some player and she's been in some shift this game and she really deserves a lot of credit for that especially coming back from that tackle she's had maybe five minutes ago trying to get this ball. ball in it's tight enough the line it's taken in there by centre forward Abby Donnelly Donnelly trying to get around oh good save referee's given a penalty a penalty called and now now is the chance for the Royals <laughs> right decision I have to say about this but uh, I mean I'm not going to lie I think that was the right decision by, by the d- defender to do it at that stage or else keep the hurl in but it, it was going to be a goal it, it was very close she was swinging on it and she was pulled down. Who was that? Yeah, it was some shot. It was going top corner. You'd have to yes. give Neve Cribben some credit for stopping it. Yes. But here's the chance now again. And Minogue is standing over this. And there'll only be one player in front of her this time. There was eight there when she took that uh, 20 metre free just seconds ago. 12 points to seven. You'd feel cleaner. Mead need this. They absolutely need it. And uh, there's no doubt that both, um, both, player, both goalie and, and Ethan Minogue will be learning from last week. You know, Neve. Well, she needs to stop it first of all, obviously, but she should not be banned out to uh, ban it out again if she blocks it. But very, very interesting dynamic now between Eva and and, and Neve. Grace Coleman is going to be coming in by the looks of things for Mead. Brendan Skeen looked up to the bench here, looking for her to get her top off and get ready to come in. So here's the chance. So Mead, you feel need this? We saw penalty in Crow Park. We know what happened. Probably the last day mightn't have been a penalty. A lot of people disputed it, but this one was definitely a penalty. There's Neve a lot more Minogue. Ryan on this ball as well. Up against Gribben. Minogue with the strike. Yes! Back in the net. Low to the bottom corner. Not a whole lot Neve Gribben can do about those. No, that's, that's the hardest ball. Blocked with the low ball. And all the people in this way. But it's okay. They have a question at the minute, but three points in it. I mean, it can go either way, but... And this gives me a bit of motivation God, God knows if there's going to be a score Still a lot to play for now It's a two point game It's the closest Mead have got in about 25 minutes Maybe their tails are up now They're going to start peppering this bottom end here The town end of the ground 
Ball breaks. Lead of players over here now. Kira Foley trying to knock it outside. Charging forward in is the player to come on, Grace Connolly. Knocking the ball back. Mead making a one point game. Ball is tapped over the bars. The two subs that have linked up. You can even tell that the air is starting to panic. The whole game, two full bats have been, have been there right in front of the wall and they're pulled out there. And that's it. Like, once you see that, then you know that they're pulled out of structure and they're panicking. They're not sticking to the game plan. Support coming from both sides here. You can feel the energy that's coming from the crowd. You can feel it on the pitch as well. The Jack McGrath Cup is back in the melting pot here. Where is it going to the rest? Derry looked like they were in control. Five point lead they had and looked to be going fairly naturally at it. May have clinched, right. driving on. Advantage being awarded to the referee and it's going to be a free. PJ O'Mullen questioning sure what, that. What was that uh, free for? I'm not too sure. I think it was quite a clean tackle for Mary Hager to share her arms out. And she, she was moving back. She wasn't obstructed in any case, so I'm not quite sure what, what free Liz is calling there. It's very unclear. So, Mead are they leaving it at late again? Another late charge here as they did in Crow Park could have won the game brought us back to another day here though came from 8 points down today they've come from 5 to just be a point down with 10 minutes remaining here 4 breaks, Minogue looking to get inside can she tie it up, good tackling there we know the Derry half back line have had a massive game, Downey, Nicasada and McKenna they've been the launch pad for many a scenario here for Derry but Mead all of a sudden with that penalty and the point that is followed up all of a sudden making it a one point game Aoife Shaw looking to come short for this but Mead looks like they've lost that ball over into the corner it goes Mary Hegarty lets a drop off her knee coming in on charge of the there is Clinch Hegarty going to have a strike settling the effort up and over the bar what a score brilliant she lost the first touch she made up for it a vital score maybe from a Derry point of view makes it 13 points to 1-8 makes like Mead have to come and work a little bit harder again now Derry all of a sudden maybe just the nerves of the last couple of minutes now shaken off by the Hegarty score driving on to it here now Anya McAllister the joint captain of this Derry team getting away from the attentions of Leah Devine lets the ball outside to Shaw umpire wasn't sure unbelievable I think they can feel how close they are to this have we got the time left they can feel how close they are and they're really driving on every single player is pushing for the ball here but how vital was that possession to be won that eventually set up Mary Hegarty here unbelievable but not again the midfielders and Durbin and Nicol she has been involved in almost every single score so it might be a mountain for me, but they definitely got to go up the hill again. They're three points down, haven't got it back to one with that goal from the penalty and the point as well that they got. Aoife Minogue won't give up though, driving forward with it, looking to play the ball. I think she caught it illegally again. Yes, she did. And credit the official. Brendan Skeen is not overly happy with it, but between Liz Dempsey and Mike Ryan there. Not quite sure what Aoife's giving out about though, because it went wide eventually anyway, so... So what, what a run by Aoife again up the side, going for a point. Players standing up all over the field, but she has been heroic for them this game. Bit of contention about that call, but I think it was the right call, she, the ball was out. Still, still questioning the call that has uh, been made, but it's going to be a free anyway for Derry. 14 points to 1 8. Free to be taken then by Anya McAllister. Dropping it Dangerous in deep ball. now. Looking for maybe a bit of a movement out of Shannon O'Connor here. Ball breaks. It's Aoife Shaw looking to get a knock on the ball. It's inside. O'Connor has a strike. I told you, Shannon is some, some player. So exciting. I just knew something was going to come to her. Brilliant call. And for PJ to put her on the field. For PJ to put her on the field, he knew that she would pull something like that out of the hat. And my God, what a time to do it. What a time to do it indeed. The Derry Crow going ballistic here beside it because Banner, Shannon O'Connor, come on just before the break, was urged by P. John Mullen. If you get a chance, take it. And she's rightly done that, lifting the siege a little bit that they've been under the last couple of minutes. But Mead now know that they have to come wrestling it again. 114 to 1 8. Driving forward the ball. Referee says, going to be a free to Derry. 
And the Mead player, Clea Devine, asking, what did I do wrong there? But Liz Dempsey, no question about it, going to be a free. And Clea, I don't envy you here now. We're going to have to be looking at a player in a match in the next couple of minutes. I'm just thinking, Leah Lennon, the whole half back line as well, at various different stages, Mary Hegarty, Aoife Shaw, they're all and going to be in a mix for the player of the match award here. McKenna as well. <laughs> That's her daddy called her. Rachel Looney, and I would say, don't it? <laughs> She's been unbelievable all the years. <laughs> um, we're sitting beside the Bilahi ones here beside us. Honestly, it's God, it's very hard to pick from there. Fernandez all over the field for for Derry. Um, it's just been a, a team performance, I have to say. Laura McKenna for me has been outstanding. She's been moving the ball up and down the field. Uh, hard one to call, but the match isn't over yet. <laughs> you know how long's left, Kelly? One more score. Again. You might have to go home via Galway or something like that, but. <laughs> As this ball is played in, dropping in deep, that's a huge score. That has been some response since the penalty, hasn't it? I mean, that is three unbelievable scores in the last 10 minutes from around the 45. I mean, you only see that from a team who know that they're so close to, 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 winning, to, to winning the championship. They just need to watch here, Rachel Lyons, but sort of left here by herself. Dangerous ball to win today, but they have the players and behind them. 115 to 18, then. Mead now, no. Having got to within one point, all of a sudden it's been made a seven-point game. And if Mead left the charge late, all of a sudden, Derry are the ones that responded in kind. The goal again, Shannon O'Connor, from the angle that she was at, I'm just thinking about, to fire it in, it was past a huge two players, lift. Past two players as well, unbelievably yeah. placed. I thought it was going all the way, but it was unbelievable. But you can see here, Mead, I think Mead are panicking big time. Uh, once the team start fouling... You know, instead of tackling and being composed in the tackle and waiting to put the hurl in, you know that they're they, they know they're you know they're panicking. So, I mean, another foul down here. But it's credit to Derry, as he said, it was a one-point game after 49 minutes, and by the 55th minute, it's a seven-point game. The points that have been knocked over the bar. The one again from Mary Hegarty. I have to credit that. I just think that helped an, an awful lot as well in lifting the siege, especially after the goal and the point. It made it a two-point game, then the goal from Shannon and following up from efforts from Anya McAllister. What a score, and Aoife Shaw. Unbelievable, and all the forwards calling through the scores. I love to see the number of scores there's been for Derry because they've been calling from all over. So a change is going to be made on the uh, me team. So Abby Donnelly is going to be replaced... Eight, Coming up here. On the and uh, coming in is Grace Coleman. And it looks like Mead are going to introduce number 32 as well. By my reckoning, that might be Ella O'Brien. She was. Uh, an additional panel member the last day. She's not listed in the programme today, but I'm going on that. I've, I have no other way of confirming it in the meantime. Mary Hegarty Dine, Orla Hall from Bilahi here, 18 years of age. She came on the, in the final last week as well, and she had a big impact. She's a light player, but she's very skilled, and she knows exactly where the goal is. She goes straight for it, so I think PJ's putting her on now. If Mary, Mary seems to have got a big hit there, PJ will be throwing her on now if, if Mary's coming off. And, that's brilliant for her to be able to get, get a run on as well and maybe score another another point to drive Derry closer to, to victory. Well, I know PJ O'Mullen said before the game that he'll uh, see his kids and his uh, parents tomorrow. And I tell you, there could be a week of celebrations. You might make it to Spain, <laughs> PJ. I'm sure his kids and uh, his parents are watching at the minute. Counting down the clock here. And this has been a long time coming for Derry. Like this, you know, if, if they won this game, it's been more than ten years since they've won this. And the likes of Aoife, Aoife Cassidy and Anya McAllister were on that team whenever they won, and they were only 18, 19 years of age. And for them to be, now be captains of the team and be leading them to victory, as well as another, uh, lots of other players all over the field, it's unbelievable. And a way of the county such a lift, um, but just brilliant performance. And it just goes to show how much of a team they are with all the the, the support on the field. They've got each other's backs, and it's it's really brought them to, to this lead at the minute. And most likely, 
looks like they are going to last to the end of the game. May seems to be staying on there. So, subsequent free then to come from Mead. It's asking an awful lot. We don't have the additional time just yet. Looks like Yellow Brain is getting ready to uh, come in wearing number 32, but they're holding off on that just at the minute. Coming to drive forward with an out. Aaron Mead again looking for something. Trying to get on the uh, charge here now and play it forward there was uh, Helen Burke with the ball breaks from a dairy point of view. They have a seven point lead now. They just need to see it out here. They're pushing the back, surely. Looks like, like the foul committed. And you can see that composure from Aoife. Very easy there to dive in, and she could have she could have pulled that player down, but she stayed back, waited until she could get in the door. And that just that just shows how composed they are all over the field. So they know they, they don't need to panic now. They know they just need to keep driving on, taking the balls over the bar, and taking their long range shots, which are just unbelievable, and just driving the team on. That's all the hall coming on now. Coming in wearing number 23 for Derry is Orlet Hull from Balahi. She's replacing Mary Hegarty. And Mary has had an unbelievable game. She's had such a battle there with me. And uh, well, she's just been winning balls left, right, and center. So she should be very proud of herself. But ball breaks and coming out with it, Sophia Payne. Playing it here towards Tracy King, but this all suits Derry. It's at the right end of the field. Derry 115 to, to 18. Coming forward with it now, looking to search for goals to have to go with. Good take there, you'd have to say, with the player that's just in, L. O'Brien. Knocking it forward. Oh, but oh, lovely, oh, lovely take again. Unbelievable from Lauren. How much of ground has she covered today? Ball breaks though. Derry are looking to hunt in packs again here, but it's uh, the green jersey's getting in around it. A lot needs to work for me in the next couple of minutes. Just Haven't swarming. seen the addition time, but we're in that now by my reckoning. Derry just minding this ball now at the minute. 2012 since the Jack McGrath Cup went back to Derry. And following Antrim's success. I mean, last it? year, it's going to look like it's staying in Ulster. That's it, the momentum in Ulster at the minute. With Down and Antrim being up in senior. Derry put it to the Antrim senior team in this year's Ulster Championship. And that was maybe the foundation for, for where they're going today. And uh, it's only going up. You have to say, just think that any one of the 15 for Derry could have picked up this player to match award, but uh, come and charge it forward. Since the 20th minute of the game, Derry have just been in charge as this ball is struck in. And again, in there, looks like Leah Lennon. Again, hard no. I thought that was more of a charge there from Metro, but. Free out being awarded. That's it. And uh, a broken stick by one of the <laughs> me players. Broken stick and maybe a broken heart at the end of this game. 115 to 18 anyway. Looks like Jack McGrath is heading to Derry. He won't have to travel too far. Just across from Antrim to Derry for the celebrations. I had imagine Tina are going to go on for a long time this week. Oh my god, unbelievable. And it is on in the ball. Strike coming in from Derry is this uh, put a cherry on top. And you can see here on the camera, they've on the on the age promotes now. They're just they're waiting to get on the field. Bus loads of them came down, they were waiting to get in here. Bus loads, uh, exactly. And this is just inspirational for them. They're seeing their heroes on the field. It's unbelievable. They've been there last week and they're here now. And just to have people from our club and the, the leaders on our club and then girls they look up to and to see them now, they'll be playing senior next year, hopefully, if they, after the whistle blows now. And it's just unbelievable the momentum behind the Derry Camogie at the minute, behind the clubs and also behind the county. And this is just going to push them on even more. P.J. Mullen is trying to get in uh, Brona McCullough and Emer McCluskey but it looks things. I don't know how much time is left because uh, we are now tipping on Aoife Minogue there is Aoife Minogue trying to get up now she's been sent in there but she's been well marshalled all day you'd say by that Ooh. dairy player no matter where she went there might be a card there and it's going Need to be a free and I think taking one for the team there he wasn't waiting for waiting the boy. Uh, so it looks like uh, Lauren McKenna, and I think when she's coming off the field, we'll make the call there. Uh, our player of the match is going to be Lauren McKenna. That's a, she has been phenomenal. She's been phenomenal all season. She wasn't playing last year with the county. Uh, I don't think she was playing the year before, and she's coming this year. And she is just unbelievable. She is 
you know, she fights for the ball. She is extremely fit. She's all over the field. I'm so composed. And between her and Eva Cassidy and Anya, they've been delivering the balls, providing the balls for the forwards to get the scores. All championship long and uh, unbelievable. And she should be extremely proud of herself. She really has put a lot to this game. And Eva Shaw, they're coming off as well. So, Eva Shaw of Lavi and Lauren McKenna, our player of the match, have been called ashore. They're getting a the great applause as they come off here. And so on the, on the day come out celebrating down there giving hugs. They knew, they knew they was another few minutes away. That ball goes over the bar then from Aoife Minogue. We have to give her a shout as well as regards that she she led the charge for uh, Mead nearly single-handedly at some cases, I, didn't she? I completely agree. And I thought if Mead were, um, you know, if Mead were going out the other end of this, as champion, she would definitely be getting it. Um, she was just unbelievable. But the only thing was the freeze, maybe. But um, just lacked composure there a wee bit. But there you have where it is all over the field. The goal scorer, Shandra Connor, going to win that ball there again. That's it. She's redeemed herself after the first the first few balls she lost there. Um, the goal, I mean, that just sealed. I think sealed the deal for Derry, to be honest, and, and set the tone for the last ten minutes. And you can see her there. She's she's all over the all over the forward line. She runs. She's extremely hard to mark, and that's exactly what Derry need. And uh, given given me lots of ballers, so here's Anya taking a free. Should be an easy shot for her. But after conceding a goal and a point, Derry responded with a goal and two of her own as uh, Anya McAllister taps that ball over the bar. It's all over at 117 to 19. The Jack McGrath Cup will rest in Derry. Fully 11 years after they last won the title, and look at all the uh, youngsters getting on the field, all the development squads and everything that are part. I would imagine the various clubs and the county celebrations galore. But you'd have to credit, you know, Mead never went away, and with that that charge that they made with about 10 minutes ago you were thinking they may have just timed it at the, at the right moment uh, you know looking at things clean it that here you were thinking Derry this is not going to happen again but credit some of the big players they stepped up and made sure that wasn't going to happen they did, and you know what it's a team it's, it's, a, it's a team game it's a team sport and Derry they showed it all over the field they had, they had leaders in every single line they were working hard for the ball turnovers on the, on the full forward line all the way back to the full back line and they, they deserve this. They've been there, there about slash for the past few years. They lost last year very cruelly to Cork by a point in the semi-final. And you know, that last week they were. If Eve Minogue had scored that, it would be a completely different story. But this is just unbelievable for them. I can very emotional for them to be to finally get over the line. Um, a lot of people have been doubting Derek over the past few years, and we've been watching our neighbours, I'm sure, and down. You know, doing so well the past few years, and we always feel like we're the underdog. And, this is just going to give us the boost we need for the club, club level and the underage level. It's just unbelievable. And the support as well. It, just, it says a lot about, about the, the momentum in Derry. And, you know, these are our girls from all the, all the clubs. They're our girls and they, you know, they're leaders on, and they're, they're heroes for the wee girls here. You know, we're playing under, underage for Derry. And it's just unbelievable. Kleina, can I just have a word for me though they've been similar to Derry in a way that they've had to go through a bit of a rebuild a lot of change as well and they've got to an All-Ireland final we're within touch and distance of winning it and you know unfortunately now you know it's an 8 point loss here at the end but you know they're going to be one of the teams you'd imagine going to be in contention again next year that's it and Meath are always a very strong team you don't want them in your group uh, any year in the championship and I mean I wouldn't be surprised to see them back in the final next year um, they were in the semi-final last year as, as well as us um, but no they'll, they'll definitely be back but they, they'll just need to come back from this loss and it'll hurt for sure but I mean it wasn't very tight at the end so uh, they'll come back and they've a lot to work on OK Kleena we'll leave it there for the minute because I just want to drop down our microphone uh, to the President Hilda Breslin as we uh, follow through the rest of the presentation you'll hear more from us here in the next couple of minutes here in St. Hernix Park in Clonus but we're now going to have our presentations here of our player of the match award and the uh, ultimately Jack McGrath Cup Where is the photographer? Okay. I am very relieved. Can we get the captain as well? Can we get the two yeah. captains?
thank you. And congratulations to our player of the match. And the player of the match was Laura McKenna, number seven from Derry. Congratulations. Just one or two formalities before we start. Um, I just want to say a big thank you to Liz Dempsey and all of her referees. She had a great day today, today. So a big thank you to Liz and all of her referees. An enormous thank you to Clonus GAA and to Monaghan GAA for the use of Clonus Park today. And we really appreciate it. I know it's quite difficult because club championships are starting, but we really appreciate that the use of the pitch today. <laughs> I'd also particularly like to thank our sponsors, Glenn Dimplex and the Nocton family, and we're very honoured to have the Nocton family today here. And I know Carmel is very pleased as an Ulster and a Monaghan woman that Derry have one today. So a big thank you to everybody in the Nocton and Glenn Dimplex. To both teams over the last two weeks, you really have shown us outstanding camogie and it's been a joy to watch. And I know it's heartbreak today to me, but it has absolutely showcased camogie and showcased the level of the game. So a big thank you to both teams. You were outstanding. Well done to both teams. It gives me great pleasure to present the Glen Dimplex Intermediate All-Ireland Championship to the Derry Captains Ethan E. Cassidy and all Neil McAllister. <laughs> It's more an honour doing and Horn Shaw Hogel our son Hunting. Our dispire Bile and Coveroni Ali look on the me. Yahli had in sky. Yahli had do on a Emory in sky. I was saying, I'm going to say, 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 I'm to say, I'm going 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 Scaffed in Sky, August and Eurisha Bark, Lenoish, Gurmila Maigav, Lesh Namuir, and Rachor, Namuir Lena, Namuir Cool, August and Common Kamogeta, Fad, Akhar, and Okaj Mersha, or Fild, Dana Hemory Kamogeta. While I'm Mumbai hits the goal, Lesh Namuini Hori, the Dini of the sponsors, of Vienna Tort Takiach doing, Kudge War sponsors, Akahi, River Band Tours, August ASM, a big Tortan Takiach doing, August. Uh, Tomajenta Boyhashan. Uh, Boyhisle. Boyhisle. Rubber banter is a bee. Boyle and Moe has a goal, Lish, um, and Kushta Kamogiata, Kondigara, Paddy Downey, August, um, Gatanya V. Gubber, uh, her son and Kushta, um, Mickey Quigginshan Foster. Mickey Quig, Gurmoy, get us Paddy Downey, Gurmila Moyga, if it's in Taki after Fad, and Kudji or Fad, and Lena, Kush of Gahar or Fildoon. Uh, give us everything that we asked for. Gurmila Myhugov, today, County Board, Kamogi County Board, Foster. I bugger your eye. Hey, our bonus story. Atana Hasu, he's in Shin. Gathanya, Avin Shin. Otis Nablina. Karen Rafferty. Eddie McCann. Mickey Henry, our coach. Mickey McKay, our video analysis, Kira O'Mullen, goalkeeper, goalkeeper coach, August Iron Manistore, PJ O'Mullen! Go to Mila Mila Mayhagov, 
Me Benedict Shasu and Shaw, we wouldn't be standing here today if it wasn't for Yuns and the belief that Yuns put in us as players and all the work that you put in, teaching every one of us. So Gurumila, my hug of August Foster and Physio and Boylan that has been keeping us. <laughs> Gurumila, my hug and Anne, keeping us all hanging together while we got over the line in the end. <laughs> and finally, to every player on the panel, Every girl that has stepped onto the panel has been there from the start. Every single one of you are fantastic. Um, <laughs> Anne Oberkarhist, yeah, you absolutely brilliant work, everybody. And we worked and we worked and we worked. And this is what we get for all that work. <laughs> August, so Jerry. Yeah, yeah, Daniela, I'm a girl, my girl, and all. And we are in VR, file doing a Malena, my own all. I'm a Sadiri, Sophia, Yeri, and this. And the supporters are like a V and Shaw, the third tacky, doing a new August of Bark, a croaky. We should talk right and Callan and Foom, a V of Bark, a croaky, and some tacky at the Hogs of Doon, August, to come back today again with the noise and support. And we're so glad that we won it. We're so glad that we won it in Clonus, or in or. What do you call this? <laughs> <laughs> what do you call it? Clonus! 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 Right, as you can hear, Derry, Derry, Derry shouting up here all across uh, Clonus, the man that has worked the Oracle, PJ Mullen, describe that. Oh, I just think it was a, a great team performance, you know, and when you put together good performances like that, Derry, I think you get your just rewards. And look, everybody was talking about what me done last Sunday, but they hadn't given us enough credit. And, you know, during the week that hurt a lot of our players. And, you know, when we get back on Monday night, we looked at the thing and it wasn't what we were doing. It wasn't what me were doing right the last day we were just doing a lot of things wrong and today we wrecked the wrongs and right at the wrongs and i say the players were wonderful from start to finish so look just glad to get over the line glad to get over the line but you did it very impressively uh, pj now i know mead through everything i suppose in that couple of minutes but you then had a spell of your own that ultimately put the game to bed then well look we talked about it on monday night um 
Me, they're a purple patch, I suppose. They scored 1-3 uh, in 10 minutes towards the end of the second half in Croke Park. And look, that, that wasn't us. Um, today, we decided that, look, if, if they get a purple patch, that we had to react. And I think we did. I think me scored a goal and a point to bring bring them back. I think we were five up and they get back to a point. But then we get a goal and two points, you know, to put us maybe six or seven back in front. And look, those were just probably the, the difference today. You know, our big players stood up. The decision-making was better. We scored 117. And look, I think if you played like that there, you deserved to win in All-Ireland. Yeah, and I, I it, like... When I'm thinking about it as well, though, if you're PJ Mullen, you couldn't have asked any more of the one to fifteen. Any any one of them could have picked up the player of the match award. I just think he brought an awful lot to the table today. Well, look, we as I say, when we got, I knew on Monday night that this team would turn up today. Um, we sat that we were together for five and a half hours on Monday. The management had been together since eleven o'clock on Monday morning to eleven o'clock on Monday evening. I suppose it's probably I was going away, and and we wanted to be sure everything was. And we, we just felt when we looked at everything that we couldn't be as bad again. That was the problem. We just didn't turn up last week. We decided if Meath wanted to win in All-Ireland that they were going to have to beat the real Derry. If the real Derry turned up, we knew Meath would have to be exceptional. There was a couple of, couple of bits of hurt in that game. We hadn't beat Meath for a couple of years. They beat us in the league earlier on to get to Croke Park. Today, our girls just decided, regardless of what happened, we're just going to push on. We're going to get another each another percent of each other, another two percent of each of each other. But look, there was a spread of scores, a spread of defending. You know, like Leah Lennon, she's 19. She's playing full back there today. You know, she played like a 30 year old. Well, she, look, somebody just said to me, "You've just found a, a full back for the next 10 years." You know, and that's the caliber of player that we have that people didn't know about. You know, but look, there's other good players in Derry, other good players who. You know, it'd be great to see them commit to this here and get days out like this here. And, you know, from a managerial point of view, you know, that's what you'd be looking for next season. You know what I mean? More players, they come in. You know, we look at Waterford 211 junior final, 215 intermediate final, 23 All-Ireland senior final. I believe the basis is there in Derry to do the same, you know, but there's no good just me believing it. It takes everybody to believe it and everybody to put their shoulder to the wheel, the good players to commit and, uh, you know, get their days like this here. You know, that, that's a fantastic achievement for that group of girls. Isn't it important though to PJ? And I know you're going to celebrate this tonight and all week and probably for the next few months, but, uh, yeah, but like the, the scenario would be that it's important that it doesn't look, turn out like 2012, get two years at senior and then you're struggling in for the next the rest of the decade, let's say. Look, we have to look at the rest of the Ulster teams down in Antrim are performing exceptionally well They're, they've held their own now they haven't been up two, three, four years now at senior level holding their own getting, getting playing at a higher level that's what this group needs and not only this group the, the groups that are coming behind it and the other players that are out there you know Derry can be as competitive as any other team if we can push on from this here winning this and dropping down in two years three years is no use you know you want to be at the top table in any sport. You want to go the way we went about it today, the hard way. We're unbeaten all season in this championship. We top scored in the championship. We have the best defence in the championship. We've earned a right to be, to, to be in division, you know, the senior championship, the, the division up next year. We have a lot of learning to do to get prepared for that. The next big step would be get promotion to division one. And, and, and if Derry can do that there in the league, you know, then there's no excuses going forward for Derry not to push on for... Their under 14s won a major tournament there. Their under 16s are all Ireland champions. They've a fantastic minor team. They now have a like, that's a young team with 28 or 29 is the oldest player. You know the average age of that team is 20. You know the future is good if everybody really buys into it. There's a split season, so there's no reason why it can't work. Well, PJ, congratulations! It's a fair achievement, and uh, best of luck at the holiday now. Can I just to Dara, Oshin, and and Kane. Lads, we'll see you tomorrow, and uh, uh, I'll, I'll bring back a few memories for you. I don't know what shape you'll be in, PJ, but enjoy the holiday. Enjoy tonight. Uh, PJ Mullen giving us his, his thoughts uh, on the game. I think uh, we're going to be joined by uh, Kleena and obviously Lauren as well, but they're getting a picture taken just at the uh, minute they'll come up to us. But well done to uh, PJ Mullen. So, Lauren, with uh, a couple of fans, I think. But look at that crowd out there. Lauren McKenna is going to join us. I think I think you're deserving of that. How are you doing, Lauren? We're just up on the camera up here in front of us. You're our player of the match. Uh, great to see some of the kids around uh, looking for your autograph and stuff. It's kind of surreal, to be honest. Like, it's 
beyond my expectation even just to win it but to get like player of the match like there's so many girls out there that could have got it but even for the younger generation coming through it's, it's unbelievable for them to see this something that they can look forward to in the future yeah, we were talking about it. I didn't want to take any of the gloss off of your victory here today as regards that, you know, looking to the future, that this now needs to be built on. Maybe unlike 2012, this definitely needs to be built on a bit better. Definitely. Um, I know our panel this year has been quite small. A few girls dropped out and we got a few girls in like in the middle of the year. But credit to every single one of them. They've put, like, there's 25 girls there. We're putting all of our effort in. But we do. We have to build on it next year. We're into the seniors now. We have to try build on what we already have. Try get more people in if we can. More girls that are willing to play. Hopefully seeing that there today will get them out for us. Was that nearly the perfect performance? Um, We'll say yes. <laughs> in the second half, maybe 10, was it maybe 15, 20 minutes in, we were like, oh, we're not doing the same repeat as last week. But we got over the line in the end, thankfully. For yourselves, though, you know, I just thought there was a bit of a steeliness about it that there wasn't going to be a situation like last week. However, it got a bit ropey with about 10 minutes to go. You're right, it did. I feel like in the changing room, it was a lot different of a vibe this week. Um, we said to ourselves, last week we were very calm in the changing room, but this week we were all going around each other, patting each other in the back. Well, we said we had the lead but we were like we are not throwing this away this time PJ got us going got us a good shout in that <laughs> and we went from there and we, we got over the line so it's maybe the, the pinnacle of everything going forward maybe PJ needs to go away for a few days and maybe that all works out is it <laughs> here don't say that no, he, he had a pay I don't know him and Kira are a bit unlucky at the minute having to come home but here it worked out for him in the end we've done it for her, him and her uh, yeah and uh, that's a big thing I think as well you were talking about a small panel but you seem a very unified group we are, I feel, there was a stage at this, in the middle of the year, we had a team bonding day, and I don't know what about it it was, but every single one of us just gelled, and I have played a couple of seasons, maybe about half of the year, whatever, but it just never felt like that, we, it genuinely feels like a club team, like we were doing it today for every single girl in that pitch, we knew the one beside us was going to work just as hard for the other, it's just like a club team, which is exactly what you want at county, a county level. Yeah, absolutely, and I think it just played out today. Uh, let's just have a quick word for me then, I know looking at the opposition, you, you, you know, you've had many battles with them in recent time, especially the league semi-final this year, and you had to go toe to toe for twice in a week here. You know, they're a team that I know they'll be sore now, but you'd imagine they're going to still knock it on the door again next year. Hundred percent, like absolutely credit to Meath. They got to the league final as well. Every time that we meet them, it's never easy. I feel like we're a team of like similar physicality, similar skill, and it's always going to be a good battle. But like Meath out there today, like credit to them, like they put it up to us. They kept knocking and knocking away, putting the points over, winning the free you know like fair play to them but they'll definitely be back next year stronger than ever congratulations to you on winning our player of the match and uh, lastly it's going to be a big party tonight I imagine oh you are right I'm bringing that ready up in the bus getting the tunes on <laughs> well congratulations Lauren and enjoy it Derry as you head off with the Derry team we get uh, Kleena back in then for her last uh, words here as a uh, Tina, as a, as a dairy person, that must be great to look out and see all the red and white out there. Oh, it's unbelievable, and you're seeing people here putting so much work day in, day out, year after year into Wogey and Derry, and for that to come out. I mean, the committee put so much effort in this year, it really pulled everything together. Um, they did everything they could for the girls, and the girls just, you know, it's been, it's been a long time coming, and every year you felt the team getting closer and closer, more close knit, and. Uh, and all of you players coming in, and this is just going to drive more players now to go out to county, as well as the younger players to, to, to strive to, to to want to play for county for, for Derry, you know. Um, so between this year and the football, and the hurlers are in the all Ireland final as well this year. So there's a lot of momentum just behind the GAA in general and Derry, and they're you know it's just going upwards, and it's just unbelievable. And the sea, the sea of red, like the support to come out for a second week running, unbelievable. And you can just see the emotion in girls there and the big hugs and everything, but it's so well deserved. And I sent Lauren there, it was just. You know, she was outstanding, but it was just a team effort all around. It yeah. was quite hard to pick a player of the game. Um, you could have picked, picked a few there, and it's just a testament to them and the, and the management as well. I was chastised once about looking too far into the future about what it would mean, but, you know, PJ and Lauren were quick to point out that it's something now, you know, up at senior now next year, but something to build on for the future, that all these little girls here, and even the boys that are here as well, will be inspired by this team going forward. Yeah, exactly, and, you know... Like seniors, where you want to be—that's the highest level you can be at. And, and uh, it means that these girls now, you know, you see the likes of Antrim, for example. We in Derry find it quite hard to, because there's so many Antrim players that are playing at a senior level. They come back to club and they're fit as a fiddle. They played, with the, you know, the best players in the country for six months. They played against them, you know, 
there's no better training than that. So for Derry now to be going next year, have the momentum behind them. But for them to be going uh, into senior next year, I mean, it's unbelievable and it's, it's a great, uh, it's a big reason for more players to come out because they know they'll be playing at the highest level and that's where you want to be. And, and uh, it's just unbelievable but yeah. I mean they're not, I don't think they'll be thinking about that today they'll just be thinking Absolutely. unbelievable they got past the line and they just proved you know proved themselves today a lot of people doubted them after last week saying they just threw it away they threw none away so they have the cup in their hands now and they're bringing it back today you know can I have a word for the man that's uh, behind us here he's doing local press interviews and everything like that PJ Mullen you know obviously has something that he was able to pull this crew together and get them to win the All-Ireland title yeah that's it I, I, you know PJ, unbelievable management, and I've, I've heard nothing but good about him this year from the players in the panel, but he's come on the back as well of brilliant managers who come in, and every year they've been building and building and building, and PJ came in today, or PJ came in this year, and he just brought something new, and uh, he brought with him a brilliant, you know, pulled together a brilliant management team with uh, a great air of professional, pre- professionals is about them, and uh, that's just giving them an extra touch, but it's, it's a team effort, it's unbelievable, fair play, and he made all the right calls today, for example, bringing Shannon on, you know, he, that was, you know, she scored a goal, she missed three, but she scored a goal in the end up, and that's what Derry needed to see the deal, and after that, there's there's only one way they were going, and that was, you know, towards Jack McGrath. Like. Now, I just, a word for me before we finish up, uh, it might have got lost before the presentation, your comment as regards, you know, they're gone through a rebuilding process as well they're always a kind of a tough proud county when it comes to their camogie game anyway you know you'd imagine again I know people say let's not be looking at 2024 too soon but you know they're going to be there or thereabouts again yeah of course and they're brilliant they're brilliant camogues there and uh, you know it's the same for them with the ladies football you know the, 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 the momentum that went behind the, the female game in, in Meath is just going upwards and the only thing I would say is rebuilding from last year is you know they really need to, to start seeding more, more leaders onto the field um, they have brilliant moves. I just think they were maybe lacking in leaders, you know, and they can't always look at the one player. Ethan Minogue was just, you know, a tall's woman the whole game um, last week and just throughout the championship. But they really need to push on, and you know, it's a team sport. You need a you need a whole panel to push on, and leaders in every line. So they'll learn, but you know, you learn more from losses, I think, from from wins. And Meath are certainly going to learn a lot from last week and and a lot from today. And they'll be they'll be a team to watch for next year. Team to watch, uh, of course. Well, uh, that probably brings an end then to uh, our coverage here of this Glen Dimplex All Ireland Intermediate Camogie Championship final day. Jack McGrath Cup, well, he'll be heading up uh, across the River Ban and the Foyle and the other rivers, of course, that are in uh, Derry over the next uh, week and months and everything like that. Lots to celebrate, but I suppose tonight will be the focal t- uh, point with my thanks to Jane Dolan, to Clean and Vianon for uh, joining me here uh, this afternoon and giving us excellent uh, coverage here and analysis to Owen and all the great camera work that he did in the background. Hopefully you've enjoyed it, folks. That's the last adult final of 2023 at inter-county level we didn't think we'd get another week out of it but we did with lots more to look forward to I'm sure plenty of club to come between now and the end of the year of course with the All-Ireland final uh, all to be played out and I'm sure there's a little team up in Derry that uh, will be endeavouring to get back uh, to the top of the Oracle as well with uh, of course Schlock Neil one to watch out for but for the moment it's Derry Camogie that are on top they are the All-Ireland Intermediate Camogie Champions have won here today against Mead congratulations to them thanks everyone in the background for all their help I've been Killing Whelan until next time it's good luck to you